this Lord, yes, Lord. We started a teaching, and you all have to give my voice this morning. It seems like my voice has always been attacked, but the devil's a liar. We started, and we, I want to remind you, this is the year of spiritual obedience. And a lot of the teachings are generated that the Lord has given me around our obedience to him and his word, because they're one. And through it, we receive our blessings. This is why the scripture says obedience is better than sacrifice. Because it opens up the door for us to walk in the fullness of God's covenant in and for our lives. That covenant was designed to ensure that we know that we know that we know that the promises are already there and given by God for those who trust and believe in him. We started the teaching on last week and I've been spending time in the the Old Testament because a lot of it deals with the study of God and being a theologian as part of my area of discipline. And we talked about it in Isaiah over in the fifth chapter, beginning at verse 13, of how God had to deal with his people. And it was, it was one of the things that there are no new tricks but new players. Last week's title, I remember, that it began in How Good Are You? when differentiating from good versus evil. Do you really know what's good and what's evil? Can you differentiate when you're walking into something good or something that is evil? And we talked about that last week. And we didn't quite finish it, but it's time for us to open up our spiritual eyes so that we know that we know that we know when we're following God versus following our own flesh. The Bible said God would not leave us ignorant. But that's based on what's really in our heart and where our spiritual attitude really is lying. When I say lying, where it's laying in our lives right now. As a man thinketh or a woman thinketh in their heart, so are he or so is she. And you have to realize that we see things differently. Our thoughts are not his thoughts and our ways are not his ways. This is why it's so important. Well, we're going to do part two of that teaching. And I'm going to use this as a title this morning. Are you in evil, are you, I'm sorry, are you in spiritual captivity with your own flesh? Are you in spiritual captivity with your own flesh? Now, I want you to think about it in another term I could say bondage. Sometimes we can grow up wanting what we want when we want it. And the heck with everybody else if they try to challenge it. Well, everything that looks good to you may not be good for you. But yet and still, you can be so strong-willed and so strong-minded that you can't see the truth. And it's because you're still walking by sight and not by faith. And also, you're not allowing the spirituality of God to really enter into your life. The Holy Ghost said that Jesus stuck with us, said he would not leave us ignorant. But how often do you tune in to the Holy Spirit for guidance? Because it's supposed to be your God and your counselor. Well, I know for a fact, and I learned early on in ministry, when that scripture said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they won't follow. The challenge is that it depends on the state you're in. It's what you choose to follow or ignore. And I'm throwing that out there because it's the truth, brothers and sisters. Even today, you may be dealing with some things in your life right now that God said he won't leave you ignorant, and he knows that he will always make a way of escape, <clears throat> excuse me, according to his word. But are you following that road of escape or are you choosing to go about your own business because you want your result rather than the results God's have for you? That can be challenging. Now, let me, let me go briefly because I with this because I want to get us up to speed. Open the fifth chapter of Isaiah. hill. Excuse me, starting at chapter 13, I mean verse 13. The scripture reads, Therefore my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge of their honorable men are famished and their multitude dry up with thirst. Amplified says, Therefore my people go into captivity to their enemies without knowing it 
And because they have it, man, he used the term without knowing it in the Amplified, because they have a knowledge, they don't, they, they have not a knowledge of God. They have no knowledge of God. And they're honorable men that glory are famished, and their common people are part with thirst. They're, you got people hungry for the word, thirst for the word. You're really, the real one inside of you is thirsty for God, his presence, his word. But your flesh can be so caught up in what it wants when it wants it and how it wants it that it will try to ignore that very voice is trying to talk to you. Brothers and sisters, basic scripture, 23rd Psalm. If the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We, we quote that. But do you believe it? Have you been receiving it? And then if not, you got to acknowledge your wife. Because God is not a man that you should lie. So you have to ask yourself, why? <coughs> Excuse me. Now it also says here, later in verse 14, it says, Therefore hell have enlarged herself, and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. In word, the devil already know who he has by their tail, by their neck, who's following him than rather than following God. So he's making room for you. Is he making room for you? I don't want him making any room for me because I don't plan to go there. But you gotta ask yourself, have your actions, your attitude, your disobedience, your total ignorance, and when I say ignorance, of ignoring the truth for your life, has it opened the door for you to have a space not above but down below? Ask yourself now. Verse 15 says, And the mean man should be brought down. Hmm. And the mighty man shall be humbled. And the eyes of the lawfully shall be humbled. Brothers, this, you know, I have to question that of where I am. One of the things that I want to know to myself, and I have to, I have to, and I have to ask you, and I have to ask myself, <coughs> have we really been giving in to the <laughs> demons who are taunting us? Now, I, I use that term because demons do oppress you. Now, they can't possess you, but they can't oppress you. And the thing about it, we can be oppressed so much that we can start giving in to those demonic forces. You know, it's like we say, the heck with it, I'm just going to do my thing. I just, well, well I, I just, I'm just going to do my thing. Well, if your thing is not God thing, what do you think the results are? Last time I read, read in the scripture, it says the wages of sin is death. So, why yield to those taunting demons that's always trying to come against you? You see, the devil knows our weakness. And we've got to ask ourselves, why do we yield to that? I have no Something told me. Why are you always yielding to that dark side of your life? You have to ask yourself, why? You know what's right. And I know you know what's right. Because God said he would begin to write his laws into our hearts. So it's there. No one really have to tell you. And what I'm saying to you, with the Holy Spirit and God's Spirit inside of you, you know right from wrong. But when we make a decision to do what's wrong rather than right, we're asking ourselves, or we've got a lot of us to get so caught up that now we can't, can't even recognize good from evil. And, and let's read on and see why. It says, verse 16, But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God that is holy shall be sanctified in righteousness, or non-righteousness. Then shall the lambs feed after their manner, and the waste places of the fat one shall strangers eat. In other words, people start, other people start eating your stuff. It says, verse 18, Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity, and sin, as it were, a cart of rope. In other words, don't let your vanity take you down. You know, well, that's just who I am. Let fuck you who you are. You're trying to change it. That's why you came born again. Old things should pass away. All things should become new. Don't allow your vanity to be the rope around your neck that hinders you. Okay? Now, let me read on here. It says, <clears throat> Verse 17, Then shall the lambs feed after their manner, and the waste places of the fat ones shall strangers eat. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity, and sin, as it were, with a card hope. Verse 19. That say, let him make speed and hasten his work. 
that we may see it, and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come, that we may know it. That is an interesting thing, because the verses that, that really get me, or have got my attention, are the three that follows with this right here. And I want you to read this real slow. I'm going to read this slow, so I want you to look at these particular verses here. It says, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, and put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Now you say, well, uh, how can people do that? You've done it. I've done it. All because of our flesh, wanting what we want when we want it and not seeing the truth. Well, others might say, well, I, I saw it, but I, I, I couldn't, we couldn't tell you anything. We, we, we tried to tell you, but you didn't want to see it. How many times have you had that experience? And how many times have you backed off from other relatives who you know they just wanted, they wasn't going to hear you, they were going to do what they wanted to do because they were blinded and they were, it was a self-infliction of the truth. They wanted what they wanted when they wanted. And they didn't want to see the truth. They just wanted the flesh does that. And then that's when you go into captivity of your own flesh based on your own fleshly desires. Are you there yet? Or this is, the, is that what you're going through today? You see, Jesus said he came to make us free, you know. And he came to make us free through the truth. And once you know the truth, the truth shall make and keep you free. It goes here in verse 20, 21. It says, Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Mm -hmm. Is that you? Is that you? Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Verse 22 says, Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to make strong men. Now, let me read that from there for because I want you to understand this. It said, Woe unto those who are mighty Heroes and drinking wine and men of strength and mixing alcoholic drinks. It goes on, it says, verse 20, will justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous for him. Now, sometimes you get people who figure that everything's okay. Then they go into a state of, of trying to absorb you know, various beverages, alcoholic beverages and so on, to really escape the truth or to keep them in the state they want to stay in. Or they find themselves with uh, hallucinating drugs, you know. Some people, uh, they would get on, uh, we, we say smoking marijuana or without medicinal purposes, or they might find themselves trying to escape reality through uh, uh, prescribed drugs that can hurt them rather than help them. Now, one of the things that I looked at in this right here, because... You you gotta understand that that you gotta remain in a in a uh, sanctified position, and you gotta allow yourself to understand what God is really saying. Turn to the book of Proverbs, twenty third chapter. I, I want you to see something in Proverbs here. Uh, and forgive me with this runny nose, brothers and sisters. Oh. Proverbs 23rd chapter. Beginning at the 19th verse. I want you to look at this. I, I mean, this brought me to when I start talking about just trying to drink yourself that you're living for just the party life, so to speak, you know? Drinking and eating, drinking and eating, and thinking you, you've got it made because you're able to drink and eat when you want to and not think about the consequences of what you're really doing and where your life is really going. But, but look at this, what it says here in Proverbs now. It says, Hear thou, my son, and be wise, and guide thy heart in the way. Be not among lion bibbers, among riotous eaters of flesh. For the, verse 21, for the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty. Please underline that. For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and the drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. 
In other words, that fast life, that fast living, trying to do what you want and celebrate all the time will lead you back to poverty. Why? You're listening to yourself and not to God. You're trying to walk by sight and not by faith. You know, let me tell you something. That kind of lifestyle is only for a moment. But that moment could be more destructive in the end for each and every one of us. And in our youth, been there, done that. And we have no good results from that right now. You have a lot of people that we know, successful, what we consider successful people, in the latter part of their lives right now are suffering because of what they did in their youth. They don't realize they were laying a path for destruction. It says here that, verse 21 there, it says, For the drunkard and the glutton shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. It says here, let's look at verse 22, it says, Hearken unto thy father that begot thee. Sometimes you your parents try to tell you the truth. And despise not thy mother when she's old. Well, you don't understand, Mom. You don't understand, Dad. It says hearken to them. You need to listen to them. Because they see things and they want you to know the truth. And it says buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instructions and understanding. Sometimes you need to shut up and listen. Don't be so caught up in yourself that you become so wise in your own self that you cannot listen when people that God is using other people to tell you the truth of what, what you're really doing and what's really going on. We can be so caught up in ourselves. We can be so contrary. We can be so in a contrite state that we don't want to listen. And the bottom is falling out all around us. Why? If God's evil leave you ignorant, he's going to send the truth to you whether you can see it or not. But listen, listen. See, don't allow your vanity to be your wall of destruction. Are you listening? Turn, turn back over to Isaiah. I want you to see that in that particular uh, passage right there. This part here that really got me over in uh, verse 23. It says, and think about now, in, in the country we're living in right now, now what you think of it, it says, it's talking about all these things. When you're in that state, you're drunken with your own, what you're, you're drunken with your own desires, and you're eating based on what you think. Because you're full of it right now. I use that term here for better expression that you can relate to. You're drunken with your own desires. You're drunken based on the things you think you've received. You're, you're becoming fat in all your mind and all your vanity because of what you think you're eating the fat of the land. When you're not reading the fat of the land, you're heading down to a road of destruction. But yet instead it says which justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteous of the rich. Let's break that down. It says, <coughs> do not allow yourself to acquit the guilty, to acquit the guilty and reward those who are really in a sinful state. Sometimes you will find yourself trying to acquit the guilty for your own personal gain. Think about that. It's what's happening right now in politics and around this country right now. People will do things and people will say, well, they're they okay. They're, they're just going to be okay. No. you got to tell them the truth. you got to tell them the truth. And you can allow yourself to get pulled in because you feel that if you don't say, if you don't, if you don't really reveal the truth and say the truth, that it won't hurt you for receiving your personal gain. Never try to acquit the guilty. Tell them, you're wrong. No, you're just wrong. You know? That's what God expects of you. The Bible said when you can, can correct a brother or a sister from their erring ways, you in turn will hide a multitude of your own sins. Never forget that. If you can correct a brother or sister of their erring ways, things that are going to bring them down to destruction, things that are going to lead them directly to hell, you in turn will hide in the eyes of the Lord a multitude of your own sins. But don't try to acquit the guilty for your personal gain. Tell them the truth because you will never receive that gain. The only thing you've done is allow yourself along with others to 
to go down the road of total destruction. You becoming a part of that group that the devil has set up to say, oh, I need to expand, I need more space, because I just picked up two or three more people that's going to be heading this way. Think about that for a minute. That, that, that personal gain, we, sometimes we would do anything just to get ahead, whether it's good or bad. No. Make sure it's righteous. Make sure it's something being got directed and guided by God. Don't, uh, don't overlook a lie. Tell the truth about it. Acknowledge it. Because it will come back to haunt you. Why? Because the Word says it. It says, also, always don't criticize a person who's trying to walk in righteousness. Now, let, let me say this to you. When people are trying to tell you the truth, Sometimes you just don't want to hear it. Now, you know it's the truth, but you don't want to hear it. Why? Because you're saying it. They're telling you. And you won't be caught up in the thing, oh, I, uh, uh, I don't, you don't want to hear, oh, I told you so. No, no, it's not so much that they told you so. It's that they were trying to help free you from the path of destruction that you were headed down. You know, I use this term, there are no new tricks. And this is why I'm going back to the Old Testament. Because a lot of stuff that was going on, before Christ came into our life, men and women were doing. And even though Christ has come here, God has changed up. Jesus said he did not come to destroy the Old Testament of the law, but to help fulfill it. Combine it, you see, I'm trying to make you a way of escape, but I want you to know this was already prophesied, and you're living it, but I'm trying to give you a way of escape. First John 1 and 9, God really said, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. This is the year of spiritual obedience, brothers and sisters. It's time for us to obtain and receive what's right and ours, but we can't receive it through disobedience. God was punishing Israel, let me put Jerusalem, the Jewish nation, his calling people to come they just chose to follow other gods. Why are you following other gods when they start doing things on their own, rather than adhering to his word? When you start listening to yourself, rather than the truth, you're following another God. And who's that God? You. You've got people who really think they're the gods of your own life. Last time I read, man didn't make man. God made men. Men made slaves. Are you a slave to your own self? Have you allowed yourself to be pulled into to a captivity of bondage because of your own vanity? because of the vanity of others that you want to run around with? Have you been lately calling evil good and good evil? Have you been trying to acquit those who you know are doing wrong for your own personal gain? See, these are the questions you have to really ask yourself. You know? Who, who need to ask that? Those who are called by his name. What name is that? Believers. Believers in what? In God and the truth of the devil and his lies. You see, brothers and sisters, time out. We want to go forward in receiving the promises. Jesus said he came to give us life. He came to give us life, so he's already come. They're there and give it to us more abundantly with the rewards being that of everlasting life. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's go to verse 24. I got to finish this out. He said, Therefore, as the fire devoured the stubble the flame consuming the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their, and their blossom shall go as a dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Let, let me read the, uh, verse 24, because I'm, I'm going to break it down. It says, Therefore, as the tongue of the fire devours the stubble, as the dry, dry, the dry grass sinks down into the flame, so their roots shall be like rottenness, and the blossoms should go up like fire and dust, because they have rejected and cast away the law and the teaching of the Lord of hosts, and have not believed, but have treated scornfully and have despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Now, well, let, me, let me just say this and summarize this. Nothing that you planted will grow. Everything that you think looks good will turn rotten. In other words, it may look good today, but it's already rotten on the vine. It's dying on the vine right now. All because you've allowed this junk to creep in. You've allowed darkness to come in rather than allow it to stay in the light of God 
bringing the sun into it that can bring light and blossoming to it. Some things right now, people think if it, it, it's going good, it's already rotting in on the vine right now. You just don't know it. And then when it shows up, you ask the question, what happened? It was never planted in good soil. It, it, it was planted because you did it the wrong way rather than the righteous way of God. That's why things happen. What a man sow, he shall also reap. But you can also watch where you sowed it at. Is it really good soil you sowed it into? Or a soil you're trying to make up because you think that it can help speed up, accelerate its growth? <coughs> we find ourselves placed in that position. We have to realize that when the scripture says we have to wait on the Lord, we have to do that. We can't rush nothing. I will promise you we want everything yesterday. Wait on the Lord. Everything will come in due season. But God will see if you're going to trust Him. Sometimes you have to patiently wait on the Lord. And let me tell you something, it's like the vision. It always has an appointed time. And when that time comes, it won't delay. It shall bring forth what the Word of God said is promised. Let me just close out on this right here. Verse 25, it says, <coughs> it says, Therefore, if the anger of the Lord is kindled against his people, and he has stretched forth his hand against them, and have smitten them, and the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were foretold in the midst of the street, for all this is his anger is not turned away, and his hand is stretched out still. This is what God, God was tired. He was just tired of people who were called by his name, who were not following his rules, who were still trying to do things their own way, or following other gods, and think that it won't benefit of the blessing that he had laid out for them. God said, no, 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 I'm going to end this. I need to let you see what you've done, and I'm going to find the results of the consequences of not being obedient to the word. It says here, and he will lift up an instant to the nations from afar, and he will, he will hiss unto them from the ends of the earth, and behold, they shall come with speedy swift. In other words, God will open the door and notify nations of, of, of just demonic forces that, okay, the hedge is down. The hedge is down. And when they hear it, they will begin to perceive your way. You ever wonder what happened? All of a sudden things were going great, and all of a sudden the bottom fell out? What happened? Well, when things were going great, were you doing it God's way, or were you trying to do it your way? That's the question. And when the bottom fell out, maybe the things, the same thing is happening in your life that God did to the nation of Jerusalem or to Judea. He opened up the word. He said, no, if you want to do it your way, I'm going to let you do it your way. But I'm going to let other people know that no longer will you have a hedge upon you. And that God will begin to open up the door for others to intervene and to come into your life. But you read on. Look, look what happened here. It says, and he will lift up an ensign to the nation. Okay? It's like a sound to the nation from far and will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speedy swiftly. None shall be weary nor stumble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep. Neither shall the girdle of their loins be loose, nor the latches of their shoes be broken. Now, you say, what, 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 what is he, who is he calling? He's calling the wicked, the hostile, the vengeful people, the vengeful thing. He's allowed those demonic forces to enter into your life all because you're choosing not to follow the ways of God. You're choosing darkness. You have chosen darkness over light, and now you've got to pay the price for it. It says here, None shall be weary. These are the people now who are coming your way. They won't be, they'll be strong. They had full strength just to get to you. You've got things won't you so bad God's been protecting you from that you've allowed yourself to open it because of your own self-righteousness. You've allowed things to head your way. And you think that everything's going great. Now the bottom is about to fall out. It says, it says, none of these shall grow weary, stumble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep, neither shall the girdle of their loins be loose, nor the latch of their shoes be broken. 
whose arrows are sharp and all their bows bent, their horses' hoofs shall be counted like first, and their wheels like a whirlwind. Verse 29, their roaring shall be like a lion, they shall roar young lions, yea, they shall roar and lay hold of the prey, and shall carry it away safe, and none shall deliver it. Verse 30, and that in that day they shall roar against them like the roaring of the sea. And if one look upon the land, behold, darkness and sorrow, and the light is darkened from the heaven into heavens uh, above. Now, what is really saying? God has allowed them to seize. If we remember history, God allowed uh, uh, the enemies of the world to attack Jerusalem and carry away all this pride right there to show them that they had been serving another God. And it was God who was keeping them the whole time. And because of them allowing themselves to serve other gods and do things their way rather than following God's instruction on how to live and the way to live, he let them find out that you've always had people who despise you. You've always had people who wanted to have what you had, all because they thought it was prosperous. And once they found that that hedge was down, see, they didn't want to touch it because they thought you're faithful. They knew they thought you're faithful to keep you old, but you lost faith because you stopped following other gods. You stopped following the role of destruction. You know, and destructiveness. Therefore, things begin to happen. God will always allow hostile nations to come your way and execute His judgment upon you. I'm asking you today, where are you today? Where is your life today? What do you feel is the best thing for you? Are you opening yourself to the truth? Do you realize when you're doing good versus evil? Or have allowed yourself to become captivity to your own flesh? Oh, brothers and sisters, those days have to be gone. Jesus said, once you know the truth, it's the truth that should make you free. Let's pray. Let's pray. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, as we come before you today, we come before you with a humble spirit. We come before you with a submissive spirit. We come before you, Father God, understanding and realizing, Father God, that we can do nothing of our own but that what we hear and see of our Father. We understand, Father God, that you will never lead us down a blind road or a road of destruction, but you will keep us in your light, your path of victory. Help us, Father God, to acknowledge. Help us to realize, Father God, when we turn down that road of darkness. Help us, Father God, to, to see that there is a path, that there is a way of escape that you have already made for us, but we have to choose to follow it, Lord. Oh, Father God, bless those who humble themselves. Bless those who realize, Father God, that the enemy has set them up, Father. Bless those, Father God, who realize, Father God, that first John was there. It's been there the whole time. That they've just confessed their sins, that you're faithful just to forgive them of their sins and to cleanse them from all unrighteousness, Father. Father God, allow your truth to be their truth. Allow your ways to be their ways, Father God. Help them, Father God, and help us, Father God, to walk back into that light, that light of prosperity, that light of healing, that light of victory, that life of total prosperity. Help us to realize, Father God, that we can do all things through Christ, through that anointing that strengthens us. Father, I thank you today that the words that are being spoken are not my words, but your words, Father. That you allow, Father God, their hearts, our hearts, to open up to the truth. Knowing, Father God, that when Jesus said he came to give us light and give it to us more abundantly, those were not idle words. That was the truth for believers. Father, I thank you today. And I thank you for the overall victory that each and every one of us has and will continue to have with you, in you, and through you. This day and each and every day, in your most precious Son, Jesus' name, let the church say, Amen.